Well, this game is going to be special, everybody. The winner bracket final of our tournament. China versus Korea. And we got Team Fly against C8. Now, why is this going to be epic? This is the best of five series, first and foremost. But we have the Chinese team in blue. Now, there's a little bit of a mix happening. We have a couple of Chinese players on Team Fly's side. Misaka is playing, for example, with the account Bone Punch. And on the left side, we also have one or two Koreans. And damn, they are speed picking. What the hell is happening here? With Stukov not being banned, they're obviously locking him in quickly. Malfurion on the other side. I can't keep up with this shit. What's happening here? So, yeah, I don't know. But, again, these guys are going to bring the fire today because C8 caused a massive upset when they played in the winner bracket semifinal against Team Tsunami with Hyde, Gonda, and so many others. So it was like full Korea HTC vibes from Team Tsunami. And C8 said, you know what? <laughs> we don't care. And they fucked them up hard. So, with that... It was all of a sudden the loser bracket for Team Tsunami and C8 moved on to the winner bracket final and I'm insanely hyped because now Team Fly with players like Lockdown, Reset, Misaka and others, they are obviously massively stacked too, so it's going to be pretty fun. This is my personal highlight. I've been waiting for this match for so long, ever since we saw that game between C8 and Team Tsunami. I was anticipating this. And we are starting things off with the direct pass, so I'm absolutely okay with that. We got Jojo again, played by the Korean player on uh, the blue team side, by the way. Jojo is probably the hero that switches the meta between Europe. There's a couple of switches. I've been talking about some of the changes between the European meta and the Chinese and Korean meta quite a bit. Brightwing not played, not banned, completely disregarded, as it should be, uh, here in Korea. Johanna, very, very high up in the packing order. They all play her. They oftentimes go into vacuum as a level 16 talent. And it's pretty cool to see. When it comes to supports, well, Fury and Stukov, they're reigning supreme on the support side. We see a lot of grey main over here. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. And there's a couple of heroes that are just generally absent when you're thinking about the Western scene in Europe and then compared to what's getting played here. The occasional Viking pick that we're getting in Europe, depending on the map choice, for example, is completely missing here. We are not getting any Zarya picks, not with Vala, not with Garrosh. Like, it's just not happening. So, there's a couple of similarities, obviously. You look over to Blaze, who's still a high priority. You have some others too, but it's pretty epic, honestly. We have, like, these small nuances, but if you watch a lot of Heroes of the Storm, that really stands out. The priority on Tychus, even though he has been now played more in the European Here scene. The Chrome stars in. Yeah, and we got Chen once again, too. So, Misaka apparently with the Blaze main tank in this game. Technically, they could still go for another melee, but I doubt it a bit. Time will tell. We got Sylvanas. And let's go. All drag pass, game number one. It's going to be awesome. Can C8 kick out another Korean team? Well, kick them in the, lo in the loser's bracket and move on to the grand final. Or are they going to turn it? Once again, the Koreans with the Witch Doctor. We're going to get a little bit of an Aziva, everybody. All drag pass, game number one. Let's go. Time to party! The winner bracket final. Guys, I'm hyped, I'm hyped. This is good. We got on the left side, Kromi, Stukov, Silvanas, Dehaka, and Johanna for the blue team. So Dehaka, the only global that is being played in this game. And he will try and control, of course, the macro. Then again, we have Nazebo played by Team Fly, which means that if you get into the late game with decent stacking on your baseline, you can with Vile Infection absolutely ruin the opponent's day. So that's going to be huge. Chen, Taika is also in the mix. Blaze played by Misaka here. He is in the main tank position and we have Malfurion behind all of that. Spiders is of course the name of the game. That's what you really want to go for. We got the Widowmakers on level 1. Chen going for the Storm Stout secret recipe. And we have some globe stacking for the main tanks. In this case it's Blaze with the new habits. And Jojo as usual with the Laws of Hope. And already the brawl straight up in the middle. As the teams are trying to go for the early kill and some hits in. Panda abuse already reported. Peter has been informed as Lockdown gets attacked. Yeah, and he is going for it. But they can't lock anybody down. Fat Illidan in the early game is just not strong enough to really jump in and isolate someone. And just as I say, he all of a sudden cuts Johanna off and she's in real trouble. And that's a kill. That has to be a kill. There's the jump. Don't tell me she gets away. No. Oh, what? Wow. Wow. Am I wrong? Like, that should have been a kill, right? A little bit more body blocking. 
Gotta hone those old school Warcraft 3 skills. Yeah? I was about to say, maybe play a little bit of Warcraft Reforged. <laughs> but then I remembered that it's called Warcraft 3 Refunded and that nobody in their right mind would ever play that game. So, yeah, good job, Blizzard. Good job. Applause, applause, applause. You managed to ruin a game that was 16 years old and make it worse. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> you gotta give them some credit for that. It wasn't easy. Now, anyways, we are on Aldrich Pass. It's a big map. Play now, we got obviously also our camps taken. Sylvanas has done the job on the left side. And over here, we got Fly doing his thing. We got Lockdown up at the top. He's getting the experience for him in as well. Down at the bot lane. Spell currently moving through. He's the one that we need to keep a bit of attention to because, again, his baseline is going to be super important. If he is able to get this stacked in a reasonable time frame, then this is going to be a great game for Team Fly. But of course, C8, they know that, and they will try to push this a little bit, especially around the objective. Now, objective usually gets targeted around level 7. Maybe the blue team, given the composition of the two teams, has different plans for this one. But they are being aggressive in the mid lane more so than anything else right now. And off we go. Zero kill so far. Reset might be the first. And he gets out. Vision was provided by Chromie. But a nice zombie wall as the Zebu was flanking in. Tychus is still alive. Gets the shots in. What about Sylvanas? The spiders and the moonfire of Malfurion are the end of her. Nicely done. The witch doctor came in. And Sylvanas had nothing. She had nothing. Absolutely nothing. So... They are trying to go for another kill. And Dehaka is waddling away down here. I don't know if he is able to get out of this one. If he gets rooted, yes he does. And the spiders are in. Even if he tries to burrow away, that grenade is still waiting. So Dehaka is also dead. That's a second kill for Team Fly. I mean, I can tell you one thing. They are not going to take C8 uh, for granted. They are not going to think, okay, this is going to be a win for us anyways. After what happened in the match against Team Tsunami, Team Fly is going all out on this one. And I talked a little bit about the Korean fan base in one of the previous games, and that they definitely were not happy about that tsunami loss. So you see Team Fly here respecting the blue team and saying, like, yeah, we have from the beginning to really focus down on this one because we don't want to lose that. If the Chinese team moves on to the grand final, and we have to bring this back somehow through the loser's bracket. That is less than ideal. So let's go and make sure that we're locking the victory in. But with C8 showing such great plays throughout the winner bracket, they, ho they are, of course, hoping for a win here. And we'll see if they can lock this one in. And I'm uh, really excited because this is going to be a great journey. 50 stacks for our boy Nazebo. We now are on level 7, as expected. We have the team slowly starting to go for the prisoner camp here. Spider build is being continued. The exception is the level 4 talent for the Zebo. Goes for the big voodoo over here. Still a bit of action in the middle of the map as Jojo is moving around again, trying to control them. Yeah, here comes the flank, but this time Stukov was ready for it. Doesn't get surprised by that at all. The amount of stacks for Jojo is a bit concerning, by the way. She's only at 5. Look at Blaze, for example. He's sitting at 13 already, so our girl here is having some real trouble finding regeneration globes. We now have the Master Assassin on level 4, standard pretty much now for uh, most Tychus players, at least in uh, the Asian server. When we're talking about Europe, you still see that talent picked. Maybe not quite as frequently as we do over here, but still, European players have adapted to that style after the last tournament that we commentated in Korea. So there it is. Off we go. There's the attack already. And the next kill about to hit. Oh, no way. She escapes again. I mean, are you kidding me? Jojo is unkillable somehow. She escaped for the second time. And Malfurion is totally lost. Who dies first? Jojo or Malfurion? Jojo or Malfurion? Both are still alive. Malfurion. Yeah, Jojo is out of the fight. Up at the top. They try to go for hard. Yeah, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an interrupt and a kill. <laughs> that would have been kind of freaky. If he would have been able to just sneakily activate the Hearthstone and save himself, that would have been insane. Nazebo is going full sp uh, specialist at the bot lane. Bruh! And is just trying to take a couple of these towers down with success. So they have now the lead and experience that translates into the early levels, uh, level 10. But also some structures destroyed at the bottom of the map. So good for him. Yeah, right now, 69 kills for Nazebo. Yeah, it is a little bit, but still. 
Yeah, so the Zebra's at 69 stacks and is looking for another kill. And Sylvanas is doing what she can and escapes. The spiders are nibbling at the fountain. Where's the grenade? No! Reset the globe saves him! <laughs> yeah, not clutch at all. Not clutch at all. Dives into the fort, gets nearly taken down, and then the globe saves him. The Zebo helping out a bit. Now, we have again, big difference here also, the adaptation on the Haka. This is something that also doesn't get played in the West a lot. Or ever. But here in Korea and China, this has been... If, I mean, it's honestly a bit of a 50-50, I would say, between isolation and adaptation. So both get played over here. This, on the other hand, total meta on the Korean side. Again, also played in Europe, of course. Falling Sword. They want the 20. They want the cooldown reduction. Still got some interrupts here. The top keg plays from Chen as he went into the barrel. So he goes for that. Yeah, and with that, the Witch Doctor is still at the bot lane. The doctor is in the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, careful. The Haka is getting farmed today, isn't he? The Haka is having a shitty day. A really shitty day. That's the second time that he dies. And he was the target multiple times now. So I don't really think that he's enjoying the game a lot. Given the fact that he's the global, he's supposed to split on lanes and get the extra experience, but the red team is having none of that. And they know that time is pretty much working in their favor, because the longer this game lasts, the better for Nazebo to get his stacks together. Unless, of course, he gets killed too, and that is a hit. Yeah, that's a nice gank. They also didn't risk anything. They went in with Sylvanas and just dropped a Wailing Arrow, made sure that Nazebo didn't stand a chance in this encounter. The Zebo's, by the way, at 51,000 siege damage, so he's been left alone to his own devices for a long time and was able to do a lot here. But let's not forget that Sylvanas is also very good if you can get her onto the structures because she's just disabling anything. And, yep, that's exactly what's happening here. So here's the kill, potentially. Sylvanas gets punished for pushing in a bit too far. And the blue team is also fielding a few more heroes in an attempt to turn this into an even battle. Superstition for Nazebo now. Oh, careful, Odin, the slap, the big slap, and Chromie with a kill. Chromie takes Tigers down. Five stacks, by the way, for the Master Assassin. He's getting close. Well, not really. Closer, maybe. 13 to 13, and the objective has been claimed. The red team was able to lock in the first prisoner camp, so now we have the raiders appearing on the map. Things are looking really good for Team Fly. And guess who's in trouble again? Yeah, it's the Haka. Here comes Gary. Gary like a gunshot. The top cack play into a corner. Yeah, the Haka. Those are some top shelf plays that we're seeing over here. But can they kill him? Fat Illidan, another jump, another jump. The spiders. Yes, there it is. Feed first. That was impossible to dodge as uh, the panda went deep. Yeah, it would have been unbearable, of course, if yeah, Dagger would have escaped here. But they made the impossible possible. So now we have Tigers dropping in the mid lane, and he's not the only one. Blaze is also down, but while the fight in the mid lane is raging on, the blue team is trying to defend there at the top lane, it is a problem for the blue team because they are losing more and more hit points on that fort, and that might be the first structure in the game that gets destroyed. But thanks to the rotation from the mid lane, they burn it down quickly enough and good to go. All right, so we got five kills to six, level 50 on both sides. The Witch Doctor is at 110 kills. Good for him. And here we go, and off. Well, yeah. he's kegging out. Just kegs out of, like, I don't think, nothing, nothing is more troll than you trying to go for a kill against, uh, against the panda, and he just kegs away. Yeah. And they want that fight. That is actually, that's a hype battle right now. Oh, nature's cure has already been used to save Nazebo. They want this. The panda in trouble jumps out. Boss is about to be taken. Here comes the falling sword. Everybody on the point, baby. They're trying for it. And the kill against Duke of the backline. Look at Odin. Just from the side, flanking and taking them down. One kill, two kill. They're going for a third one. They steal the boss away. They take Jojo down. They want four, and they get four. Four heroes down, only the gnome is still alive. 16 on the board at this point. Full focus from Mel Fury and into the regrowth here. 
Wow. Yeah, they crushed that top four. That fight was a big one. And they took a bit of a risk, honestly, moving into that. But they pulled it off, and now they're, of course, in a dominant position on the map. Not only do they have a one-level lead, they have the talent advantage for a bit longer. They can go for the double boss play now. The objective is up in another eight seconds. Nezevo at 125. Yeah, it's looking pretty strong. Good for them. Pan hasn't died yet. And we have also Chromie without a single death thus far. Yeah, and Chen is already on it. Chen wants to go for the channel. Down here, they're ensuring that that fort is probably not even playing a role in the defense against the boss. Yeah, Jojo says alone is trying to deal with it, but you can already tell how much damage the spiders are doing on the fort alone. The Zeebo is at 77,000 siege damage at this point. So, yeah, kind of crazy. Now, once again... Here comes the engage. They're starting to make a quick play for... Oh, the tank! What a hit again. Silvana's nearly dying here. Plays with a triple stun on the jet propulsion. The cab about to be taken. The boss is pushing the bot lane. So many points on the map are just burning. And C8 is trying to move in and somehow extinguish that fire. But they just can't. They have massive problems here. Yeah, they need way too much. <laughs> they, they, they need... Uh, I mean, I don't really know. They need a fireman over here. They need a policeman. But this isn't Brazos, baby. They don't have enough. So, yeah. They just are in so much trouble. Especially at the bot lane. Because, yes, they burned this one down. But the entire wall has already been opened. Now the keep itself is getting attacked. And there's a good chance that they're now trying to push in. Especially if the objective gets locked. Yeah, it's, it's looking fantastic right now. So with that, we have now 13 kills, 2-5, which by the way also means that our boy Tigers is getting dangerously close to completing his level 4 quest. Now, keep in mind, you don't pick that talent because you want to complete the quest. You pick that talent for the passive, but he's not going to complain if he's able to get the full value. I can tell you that much. Now, we have one level missing until Nazebo hits level 20. To be fair, he is at 137 stacks. That's doable in one level. But they might even hit the Storm Talents before he has the required amount. Either way, he is en route to make this a very successful game for the team. The rest of them are obviously also chipping in a whole lot of damage. Especially when you're looking at Tigers with a 46,000. He was in a great spot earlier. Oh, now that we're talking about Tigers, he gets taken down. Yeah, earlier was in a great position. He flanked them hard, but now it's a problem. Okay, Chen is trying to go for Sylvanas here. And is she going to be able to get away? She's trying to jump out and successfully does so. But the fight still continues. And the objective is now pushing. Every single lane is getting attacked. And Chromie is down. And when I say the lanes are getting attacked, I'm talking about the keeps, baby. Top side, this is already a massive disaster. This is likely to fall. Chen goes down at the bottom. That's now a three versus four. But these keeps are still in trouble, and every single one that falls means that one of the armor upgrades of the boss gets removed. The Zebo doesn't have the stacks, but he has the 20. How did that one survive? Are you kidding me? No spider moving over. The keep in the middle is already gone. Up at the top, another keep has fallen. They got level 20, and I guess technically all they gotta do is get Nazebo onto lanes with minions and get the stacks for him. So, yeah. That is... Ah, such a good game from them. 11 stacks for Tychus. Unfortunately for him, he got killed at the beginning of the fight. He was the first one to fall. Could have maybe had a chance here to make the yeah, make the quest completion happen. I mean, either way, they're looking great. This is a bit of a meme, though. <laughs> Two auto attacks, and that thing's down, too. But if you are the blue team, I mean, first of all, you're quite thankful that you have Tehaka, so you can still control the lanes to an extent. But every single lane is now heavily pressuring. And the biggest problem is obviously not only that the keeps are gone. We still have forts on every lane for Team Fly. 20 versus 20. At least they have even talents. Nomi with a gnome speed ahead and the piercing sands over here. So full sandblast value. While on level 20 now we get the change is survival and the heaven's fury. So some real powerful level 20 talents. But Nazebo is only 11 stacks away from completing the Vile Infection. Which he, by the way, hasn't taken the hu What? He didn't even take that. He upgraded Gary. Now, I love Gary. Don't get me wrong. 
Gary is amazing, but Gary over Vile Infection? Are you high? What did you smoke? That must be some, some good shit, baby. Now, as they are going for the kills here, it seems like the blue team might just be able to get a hit or two in. Yeah? Oh, but then there's the kick and the kill. Jojo down, and this looks like the beginning of the end. They're gonna try to run away from Fat Illidan, but Chen is jumping in and going for it. And it's not only him, it's the rest of the team that are chasing them hard too. In this case, Duko falls, the Haka split off to the top right. Mid lane is getting pressured, so I suppose at least one fort is falling. But they will go for boss now. It's a 5 versus 3, so it's an easy decision to make. You go for boss and at the 17 minute mark, that bad boy is gonna hit and he's gonna hit hard. And it's nearly impossible to defend this. At least Johanna should be back by the time he arrives, maybe Stuke of 2. One way or another, it's gonna be tough. Especially if someone just splits down to the bottom, uses an ability or two and takes that keep down, then they, there's no armor shield left any longer. Oh, and they go for the double whammy. Not only the boss, but also the objective. Alright, keeping Gary back to deal with those ads. Yeah, he's gonna deal with the minions. That's actually quite interesting. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> no, we haven't seen all of them as evil, but that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. I don't think that it's gonna make a difference now. But it's a pretty neat move from them to make. So yeah, today I learned. Did not know that Nazeeva could do that. Either way, they're trying to de go deep for the kills, and they have to. They need to force this fight outside of the boss. But the core is already falling. So is Silvana. She's dead. The core in trouble. And, well, that's the Haka down. And Master Assassin is completed, baby. Gary, by the way, has apparently abandoned his job, so he already moved away. This is not even helping with this any longer. But as it stands, the game is over anyways. Master Assassin completed the stacks too. Tigers with 70,000 damage and a Zebon 68k. And the 1-0 lead for Team Fly. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Map number two, Volskaya, Fa <laughs> Volskaya Foundry, and the instant Nazebo ban. <laughs> they, they came into game number two and they said, fuck that guy. <laughs> I love how the announcer didn't even have time to talk about the map name and anything. He's like, Volskaya banned. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, absolutely perfect. Now Diablo gets banned too. Nazebo is out. We are on Volskaya. It's obviously another map where, where Nazebo is quite strong. And again, obviously he's strong because the patch buffed him. But he's also good here because this is a map that goes into the late game and that's when Nazebo shines. May gets banned, Tigers gets banned, so some of the usual suspects, which by the way leaves again Stukov open. So Stukov has been banned so far in, I want to say, 95% of the cases within the first rotation. And between these two, this is now the second time that Stukov makes it through and so does Malfurion. So now C8 has to think about it. Does the Chinese tip pick him? No, they go for Mephisto. Yeah, Mephisto as a first pick. Maka must be so happy and feel validated whenever he watches these games. Because he's looking at this and like, I already told you half a year ago, Mephisto is gonna be awesome. And he's pretty much the only one in the European scene that plays him regularly. Malfurion. Picking Malf over Stukov even. Alright. High priority for them. And we get Greyman. Alrighty. Yeah, I like this. I honestly also really, really like that Team Fly came in and just like went for it. Now, they dominated the first game, you could say, but that just shows that they are not kidding around here. That setup, if, if you haven't seen the match against Team between C8 and Team Tsunami yet, you should definitely have a look because, wow, that was an upset. That was a big one. So now we have Stukov and we have Blaze. We saw Blaze played in the earlier game in the main tank position. I don't really think we're going to see that here. Time will tell, though. Blaze alone is already great whenever you're fighting for the checkpoint, but you want to have a bit more. And we could, for example, see the Jojo pick again, if they would like to. Unless, of course, she gets banned. We've seen her banned out multiple times now. But what are they going to get rid of here? Oh, well, Sky, uh, Garrosh! A little bit more worried about Garrosh with the Stukov combo. 
And on the other side, Instaban on Stitches. Yeah, Stitches hook into Malfurion and Root. You have to adjust your playstyle, obviously, a little bit. You play a little bit more passive and farther back out once that we are talking about checkpoints. But if you hit that hook and then the Root follows, Greyman can just come in and murder the target, especially if you are able to draft additional stuns and maybe also some more burst damage. So a good choice here by CA to make sure that Stitches can't set these kills up. But that still leaves us with a double pick for the red team. And there's our Jojo pick and Yorel, the space goat. Okay. Yeah, Yorel is in and off we go. Only one pick left. Yeah, Yorel straight out of Avatar. By the way, what happened to these Avatar movies? Didn't they say they would make like three or four? HTC, the show was actually produced in the same complex that they were supposedly uh, making those Avatar movies, but I never heard what happened to that. Did they cancel that shit or what happened with this? Mirrodin, this is the first time in the tournament that we see Mirrodin, by the way. Mirrodin gets played in Europe so much. All the top European teams play Mirrodin over and over again. And right now we have him for the first time also by the blue team. This is the first time I think that I've seen Muradin in this tournament. So I'm pretty happy that we're getting him here. But it's still wild to see how far off he is in priority compared to what we have in the Western scene. Val on the last pick. Junkrat comes in too. So we have really nice damage dealers on both sides. We got Mephisto, Vala, Greymane and Junkrat. That's awesome. There's a lot of utility too with Junkrat specifically trying to isolate targets. Yeah, that's Volskaya Foundry. Game number two in the best of five series. So guys, let's jump in and see which team takes the victory on the second map of the series. Game number two, the lead for Team Fly. They're of course going to attempt to extend that lead now on the second map. But C8 is going to fight back here. Now, the interesting part, if I remember correctly, when Tsunami was playing against C8, they won the first map, didn't really have any big problems there. And then things went south for them. So that was pretty crazy. Seconds. Can the blue team do it again? We're going to find out. We got Mephisto, Muradin, Blaze, Vala, and Stuko for the blue team. Nice setup, a lot of sustain, a lot of good damage. Can they chain these things up though and follow with the lurking arm here? On the side of the red team, we got Yorel and Jojo, Malfurion, Greymane and Junkrat. Also nice damage dealers, a lot of on-point damage. Vala with the arrow build for the, red for the blue team. But Greymane obviously, he is going to try and murder the dwarf in particular. But that's a lot of tankiness that we have on both sides now. And I love that not only do we have tons of stuns here, but we also have Junkrat in. Can isolate targets again, and they are already going at it right in the mid lane. And lockdown is dead. Oh, and they might even get more. That jet propulsion was sweet. Come in, take two hits. Reset with a big dodge. They're trying. Can they get a hit? <laughs> well, that was close. Vala was in trouble. Yeah, going away with a rubber ducky here. It's not the money pick, but I'll take it. Three stacks already on her level one. And Greymane still without a pick. But I like it. They're getting real spicy here. Both teams, heavy aggression from the beginning. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Muradin already jumping out. And we're gonna keep our eye on him, of course. At level one, he went into the dwarf block against Greymane. Not really a dumb idea. And of course, it's item time. At the one minute mark, you want to be ready. You want to rotate over to those camps as quickly as you can, just so that you are able to get the item. And if you take it early, then during the first checkpoint rotation, you will have that camp respawn, so teams can grab a second turret. And here we have it for reset now as well. He also went into the viciousness as a level one talent. Again, delayed this a bit. But with both turrets now claimed, the only thing that's left on the map is the healing beacon. And there's always the question, do they really make a play for it? Yes or no? Depends on it. Can they get a kill? Stormbolt connected. Nice. Reset. Reset. And he gets out. I mean, Fisto is pissing them off a little bit from the back line, but the interrupt against Stukov was also important, so the lurking arm could have been a problem. And Greyman is simply moving back, saying like, all right, I'm not going to Hearthstone just yet, but we're going to try and take down that camp and then take it from there. Yep, that's exactly where we're at right now. So let's see what they can do. Over to the top lane, we got Fly. Fly spell, trying to poke this out. Nobody went for the play on the additional item, especially with the control that was already provided by Junkrat. They didn't really 
have to make a move there. So it seems like both teams are just happy to say, you know what? We're going to take that easy. And we're going to fight for the first objective without that. The build, by the way, for uh, Mephisto also quite important. Because in this case, we have Mephisto again focusing on uh, the Lightning Nova. Don't forget, we had a lot of Mephisto builds that were focused very heavily on the Skull Missile. And that's a great drop on Malfurion. Yeah, he got completely uh, blindsided by this one. Was way too far out, and then all of a sudden they flank in from the top, and he has no chance of getting away. So it's an easy kill. Talking about easy kills, it seems like they might just get another one in. Because Lockdown is in trouble. Can the Space Goat get out? Might be able to get away here. The Stormbolt connects, and Lockdown still buying time for the team. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous how long Urel survives. But she dies. And that is level 7. For the blue team. Level 7 for them. The trickery is in. And on top of that, we now also have the heavy impact. And of course, they can take control over the middle of the map again. We have right now the Frost Shot also playing a role here. Yeah, and it's time to get the party going with the level 7 talents now on both sides being available. And you rally back to business. We have 40 points on the checkpoint against the 22%. That C8 has, so still everything's Gucci. But let's not forget that Team Fly didn't get a single kill yet. It's three kills to zero, so they have to uh, get their shit together here. And they're definitely going to get some kills eventually. With that lineup, even if you just stumble at some point, you're going to get a kill. Crayman in particular is already jonesing for uh, his ult. Just wants to get those hits out. Especially, of course, against Mirrodin, depending on what he goes for. But yep, here we have it. The play is by the blue team. They still have control to an extent. And they have that fountain already tapping it. Jet propulsion by Blaze as he moves out. But who gets the first kill here? The control has been retaken. Team Fly is starting to make a play for it. So they are about to hit it. Mirrodin is of course getting one stopper connected after another in an attempt to lock them out. And get some stuns in. It's a tiny little experience for C8. I don't necessarily think that level 10 will be playing a big role here. Not the way that they are engaging, but still. That would be an advantage. It would, of course, be crazy if you can uh, time that properly with the objective. But they're getting their head in. Stukov going melee mode again. Comes in and just murders. Greymane is dead too. That's two down. And once again, the Chinese team is crushing. Gotta love it. They did it against Team Tsunami, and now map number two against Team Fly. They are apparently going for a repeat. They want to do the same thing again. And they are now nearly level 10. <laughs> That's a lock! They get the first objective. Look at this, 99% for Team Fly. But who cares, because the blue team with level 10 abilities should be able to lock this one in easy peasy. Once again, they're going for the Consume Souls. And that's a beautiful stun on Lockdown, and he dies. Yeah, Lockdown got locked down hard. And now we have a Protector in the hands of C8. Yeah, that's gonna be quite a bit of damage. Now, do they follow the meta with the Punisher, with the Protector, and just simply open up the wall and then rotate topside, or do they change something? Nah, no, they go topside. So they're trying to take the Fountain down. Goal is to take the fountain apart, and then you have a better time for objective number two on the map. No will get for Jojo, but normally we would see the Falling Sword here for her. And there it is. Falling Sword gets taken, can put a bit more pressure on Stukov in particular, which is kind of neat. Grayman with a go for the throat. Uh oh. And that's the problem for Grayman over here. Nearly dying, but he makes it out. Protector isn't able to get much more than the Fountain, but that's honestly all that you really need here. If you can get more, of course, you're happily going to take it. But the goal is to take the Fountain down, eliminate your opponent, sustain on the lane, and then just reach. And wait for the objective. Six kills to zero. We still haven't seen a kill. It's kind of crazy. Especially with this lineup. Now... As mentioned before, that will happen eventually, or at least so I'd assume. But it's insane to me that seven and a half minutes in, we have six kills on the board, and not a single one against the blue team. Now, once again, Yorel jumping out, and she barely makes it. They're trying to put the pressure on Muradin. They already have the healing beacons, so that's good for them. 
But it really feels like C8 is the one that initiates every single time here, yeah, that makes the plays, that just doesn't play as reactionary as what we're seeing from Team Fly. So, 35,000 damage by Vala, 17,000 top damage dealer, Junkrat, on the side of Team Fly. Greymane isn't too far behind with a 15k, but you can see that there's a huge discrepancy in regards to the damage that gets dished out by the two of them. And Vala, how many stacks do we have for her? As she takes down Greymane. Vala is sitting at 33 stacks at the 8 minute mark. And they're taking the top 4. And they might take the uh oh mouth uh, instead too. 8 kills to 0! What the hell? C8 once again with some fantastic plays. And the Korean team is struggling. They really are. Junkrat is now dead too. Gets killed by Vala as the rest of the team is moving over. Topside Jojo is trying to prevent the worst from happening. And defends the gate at the keep. But this is still a disaster in the mid lane. Because with another minion wave the pressure comes with four heroes. They are diving in. Minion wave is giving them some cover. And that's the end of the fort. So they just destroyed two forts on the red team side and the Koreans are falling back farther and farther. They finally have their own level 13 talent but they are still one and a half levels behind. Yeah, that's a bit crazy. Lockdown dodges out on the storm bolt. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Careful, Urel. The RNG here could have murdered her. Junkrat down. It's just crazy. Junkrat gets hit by the ult from Mephisto. Now they have the kill on the Grey main. That's 10, 11 kills. 11 kills to zero. Lockdown might also fall. Tries to jump out, but gets greeted by the Stormbolt immediately. And that's another hit. All the forts are down. C8 is stomping in game number two. Seems like they always need one map. They needed a map against Tsunami. They needed one map against Team Fly. But now they're in full control of what's going on here. And are just crushing it. No, it's not even close at this point. Look at the gap in experience. We're talking about more than two levels. 12 kills to zero. That's just nasty. It's just absolutely nasty. Level 16 gives us now the static field. We also have the thermal protection. Bala with that build heading into the ceiling hatred. We've seen multiple times over the course of the week with these games. Greyman desperately trying to get them experience. Like, I'm helping. Takes the minion waves down, gets the team a bit of EXP, tries to get them closer to level 16, and all I can say is, like, good luck, buddy. There is not that many minion waves around right now. Every lane gets pushed out by the red team, and they're trying to go for another play. They're trying to go for another kill, maybe even. Look, that, look at that push topside. I mean, they're using that level 16 talent, they're using that massive gap in experience to break through the wall, hope for a kill, and Team Fly, they can to an extent sit there and just take the hits, but at some point they gotta move in and do something, and once it happens, the combo is ready by C8, and they lock down Urel hard, and she's dead. The Space Goat is down, and now the top lane is even more vulnerable. They're gonna lose the keep here if this continues. They could lose the game! Guys, they could lose the game! Team Fly could lose the game here if they lose a few more heroes. C8 is playing through every single minion wave, soaking a couple of the shots here. The keep is already down to 50% HP. The objective is up. Nobody cares. It's still the second objective, by the way. It's still the top side objective. One of the big problems of Volskaya Foundry. You don't have to play with the objective. Oftentimes, it's useless. And right now, keep is already down. Way better value for them. They're even looking for another kill! Oh my god, Jojo, you're cutting in close here, aren't you? Less than 100 HP when she started that. Murden jumps in again, they want more! Ah, but they're not getting it just now. Rain of Vengeance attempt was decent by Vala. The opponent was too fast. Now Stukov is exposed. Can they take Stukov down? Yeah, there's Murden jumping in, out, they're all a bit low. Once again, Junkrat trying to isolate that. The turn around and the kill! No! The double, the triple kill! And that has to be game. 
triple kill and they go for the quad. They body block Malfurion. The Korean team was chasing and then they got punished. They were trying to make some headway here, get some kills on the back, way back out. But CA, they baited them and then just turned it quickly. Got multiple kills, four in total. Now they go for the core and that is a tie. That is a tie. CA ties the game on Volskaya Foundry, the Chinese team with a victory on map number two of the best of five. Let's go, game number three. Yeah, C8 did it again. They lose game number one. Apparently they need a warm up game and then they come out swinging on Volskaya Foundry and they drop them. Now we're heading into our next map, the third one, the best of five, Battlefield of Eternity. So party time. First and foremost, we have the ban on Stukov. <laughs> this time he finally gets banned out. And we also get Tykes and Ney eliminated, plus Garrosh. Ah, two lane map, very brawl heavy in the middle. Vala, Hanzo, champs that you normally want to take here. So those would be good hero picks. Li Ming, very strong here. Greyman, of course, powerful. We've seen a couple of Jimmies coming through with the Exterminator again. Has plenty of options. But Vala, she still excels and uh, they lock her in immediately. Uh, so, yeah. There we go. Vala gets taken. Tremble before me. And here is our boy Dibbles. He was banned out a few times now against C8. And this is, I think, the first time that they let him through. And he gets locked in right away. So, yeah. Nice. I like it. Now we're going to see what he can do with... Need a light. With uh, good boy Diablo. And Blaze. Diablo Blaze. That's a real beefy front line. It's a very, very beefy front line here. Then again, the picks on the other side with Vala. You know, this is the moment when on the European scene some of the players would think about dropping Zarya in. Garrosh has been banned, so you can't go Zarya Garrosh, but with Vala, double support or Zarya would make sense in the European scene. Over here in the Korean and Chinese meta, we've seen double supports occasionally, but not really often enough to make me think that they're going to go down that path. We have Malfurion and we have Jojo. Nisaka with Johanna, the Chinese player. Yeah, they, they love Johanna over here. Oh my god. <laughs> and Chen gets banned, yeah. Uh, they saw the panda a few times and they're just like, nope. Screw that. Not happening. Yeah, last ban. Battlefield of Eternity, our third map, last ban. So what are, ba what are they banning out here? It would, be, it would be so insane if the Chinese team drops both of the top Korean teams into the war bracket. That would just be crazy. Game number one was a bit one-sided in favor of the red team, but the second map, C8 really turned up the heat. Now, a ban on Hanzo, again, one of the best damage dealers against the Immortal. They already have Vala, who with an arrow build can absolutely shred that thing. But what are we getting from the Chinese players now? Greymane? Sylvanas? Yeah, Lucio oh, first. And Li Ming, okay, so they go for the poke and the resets. If you go for Li Ming with, I mean, we have seen, I think, a few Genjis here. You can go Li Ming, Genji, Li Ming, Greymane, just combo the two or whatever combo works better for you. But the thought process is oftentimes the same. You have a little bit of poke and you have a finisher in. Can play around reset, me reset mechanics, of course. Still, it's to be seen if Team Fly maybe picks one of those two damage dealers for themselves. They still need one and Greyman would fit their composition too, but they also need a side laner. And we get Nazebo. That's actually an interesting pick here. Nazebo, so a lot of times when you're going for Nazebo, you still want Vile Infection. Now he is a lot stronger right now. Those spiders are super annoying and he can be powerful, but Battlefield of Eternity isn't really a map where you expect to go not only always to level 20, Maybe that more so than completing his baseline. That's more. That's the bigger problem. Because the lanes are so far apart, you normally don't have a chance to complete the baseline, which means that Nazebo loses a bit of the late game power that he normally has. So it's kind of interesting that they still pick him here. That they believe that even without that, he is going to be a huge asset to them also in the late game. And Greyman gets taken on the other side, so as pretty much expected. So game number three. Who pulls ahead here? C8 against Team Fly. Battlefield of Eternity, everybody. Let's go. Third map of the best of five. No 
Game number three, Diablo and Blaze on the front line for the blue team. We got Greymane and Liming for damage against the Immortal, long range poke, and of course also potential resets with Lucio trying to keep those boys alive. On the right side of the map, Team Fly playing with Deathwing here on the side lane. We got Jojo, Vala, Malfurion, and Nezebo. Now, Vala in this case is heading straight away into a supposed narrow build. Now, we've seen multi shot builds in Battlefield of Eternity, especially in the European scene, a lot. But given what we observed so far between uh, the uh, Korean and Chinese teams, Avro build makes the most sense, and here it is. Now, Nezebo will go Spiders. I would be shocked to not see him aim for that. He is probably going to heavily focus on the Immortal too. If he can drop the Spiders on the Immortal, that definitely gives him value. And this is also where the hero got buffed the most. I was still a bit skeptical, just simply because Vile Infection and his, his baseline quest is so important for him as well, that you would think them going into Greymane, for example, might have been the better choice here. But either way, the Zebo can chunk, don't get me wrong. But it's going to be real difficult to get that late game value or that baseline trade value. Now, previously they already went into the upgrade on the Gargantuan, so it's not too crazy. But yeah, we'll we'll see how this plays out. Either way, the blue team has a scary, scary lineup. And it seems like Spell is gonna be in trouble, and he's the first one to fall. The Witch Doctor is down. The Zebo, the first victim, but maybe. No, they just can't get the kill against Liming. And now Reset is in trouble too. Wants the assist, wants some help. And they might just be able to get Vala out of this. No, she dies, but so does Greymane. <laughs> it's a full fiesta down here. Everybody dead and dying. Three kills after only a minute. And that's a lot of stacks also for our Vala and a Zebo player. Yeah, good stuff. So we have them with some early aggression. Both of the teams just want to go for that victory here. And I really, really love the way that this is playing out. This is exactly what I was hoping for from uh, the winner bracket final. An intense battle between the two. Even if it ends up being a 3-1 victory for one of the two teams, this has already been pretty spectacular. So we'll see who gets the win on Battlefield of Eternity. I mean, for now, Bala is just stacking. It's also going to be really good for her in the late game scenario here. Diablo is an easy target for her at this point, but she also needs to be sure that she is not hit by him. So if he gets a bit too close, this is going to get dangerous very, very quickly. Seven stacks by now for reset. Should get the repeating arrow in just a second. It's the blue team that locks the level 4 talent in just a tiny bit faster. And they're making both now a play for the bottom. And Vala a bit too far out. Gets immediately attacked, but the roots are on the ground. And Vala is able to walk away. Hits another one. And that's a Diablo kill right there. But Greymane with a counter as he goes for the throat and takes Vala down. Deathwing dropping in from above. Blaze there for a load on the top lane. They need to get kills here. And they do. Or well, that move would not have been a smart one. But it still gives Blaze time to attack topside. So Vala is now making her way up to the top instead of rejoining the four heroes at the bottom of the map. Yeah, she is going to try and make sure that not too much is lost there. But actually, they are starting to switch away from this. They're going for the camp. They're running a bit out of time, so they're trying to get the two damage dealers to lock the shaman camp in. Vala now finally with a repeating arrow. And yeah, they need that. They are a bit off. The blue team has decided to not even go for the Shaman Camp. They decided that it's way too late. And they said, guys, let's just go for the Immortal. Especially if they waste time on their camp, we can maybe lock in the halftime show for free. And they are super close on that. But of course now, C8 also has to deal with the top lane pressure. Nezebo is already attempting to burn this down a bit. And once that the Shaman makes it through, you might take a lot of damage on those structures. So the halftime show gets locked in by C8. They have the lead now. But Blaze needs to stay at the top a bit longer and ensure that they're not losing too much. But you can burn it down now. And that's what they're trying to do. And the damage dealers are again a little bit late. So the Korean team, they need to get, make something happen here. Vala is stacking and stacking and stacking. Sitting at 10, 68 for Nazebo. And now they're trying to bring the counter damage here. But on the left side, the blue team is nibbling at the Immortal HP once again. And they are committing Greyman in Worgen form. He's chunking them down. That's a big shield on the Immortal. And they get it. Can they keep everybody alive? Actually, the answer or the question is changing very rapidly. They were nearly losing Jojo, but instead it's Blaze that's false. And Leo is not in the game, but Diablo, he dies. 
So Dibbles is down. Five kills to three. And this one could hurt. Full spider setup for the Zebo now. And, well, this one could hurt, but there's only three that will push with it. So very little at C8 can do. Now, they should be able to take the wall down. Maybe even the fountain. But it, of course, it's going to take time for Diablo to arrive here. And Deathwing could also move down to the bottom again. They're already attempting to just poke from a safe distance and get some shots in. And it's enough to take the wall down with ease. And if they get access to the fountain, they will drop that one too. But that push could have been a lot more dangerous if CA didn't lose two heroes after they locked in the Immortal. So there, there is that. Well, either way, we have them running this again. 14 stacks for Vala, and she went straight into the Monster Hunter now. Monster Hunter is something that, interestingly enough, we haven't really seen on Battlefield of Eternity with most of the Vala builds, even when they went for Arrow. They normally went away from that, even though it is one of the most impactful ones against the Immortal, of course. But Vala gets attacked again, and we've seen this over and over again. Reset is in so much trouble in these fights because he's a little bit too far out and the team is immediately going for kills. Blaze is dead too, but so is Nazebo, which means that both of the damage healers are gone. It still doesn't save Greymane, though. It's two kills for two, blow for blow. Both of the teams are at each other's throat, just trying to throw out the damage here. 22,000 damage on Vala. Die three times, sacrificing a lot for their damage. Zero kills against Liming. She's the only damage dealer that hasn't died yet. The only one. Eh. I mean, to be fair, with Deathwing having more damage than Azevo, we should probably count him in that category too. Azevo has so far not really done all that well. Uh, not as much success as you might have thought. His stacking isn't as bad as I as I thought it would be though. He's at 50. He's not too shabby. I mean, we're six minutes in, we're at level 10. It's not stellar. It's tough for him. Can't rotate like he can, for example, do on Tomb. But still, it's pretty decent. So we're all Gucci here. Gargantuan is in. The Falling Sword taken. The high five for Lucio. And the Lightning Breath for, for Diablo. And hello, sir. What is that? Disintegrate? Laser show? Self-stun? What? Now that's a little bit of a meme, at least if you look at Western meta. Not a single Liming player in this tournament has picked Disintegrate yet either. Normally the only time you pick Disintegrate if you're up against an Anubarak player that drops Cocoon because you always win a huge cooldown trade. But Disintegrate is not something that Liming players traditionally play. Wave of Force is just way too good. Way too good. Wave of Force is insane. In the hands of a good player, yeah. There's a reason why Wave of Force is full meta and Disintegrate is a bit of a joke. But every now and then, you see it being played. And in this case, they believe that it's gonna give them value. So we're gonna keep our eye on Liming and see what she can do with that. So far, she hasn't done anything with it, but eventually the laser show will start. So they're trying to just use distance to poke it down. But as Vala keeps stacking and now has Monster Hunter available, they of course can chunk this very, very quickly too. But right now, the red team is looking a little bit helpless at this point. They're trying to go for the team fight again. Vala is burning the Immortal down, or at least trying. And she's really fast on it. Diablo is down too, so great move by Team Fly. And there it is, the hit as the blue team loses the Immortal. So they lose a hero, they lose the Immortal. Thankfully for them, Diablo had the stacks on the baseline, so he's coming back now. But that is a huge push that will now be set up at the top because that is an immortal with shields. Not big ones, but a five man is pushing in for it. Diablo a little bit weaker. Down here, Deathwing has to defend. The fort got taken apart by the minions. And it is time to go. I'm a little bit scared about the level 13 talent. When you see this integrate Li Ming, you're always terrified that she might go for a glass cannon as well. And if she goes glass cannon, then I really, really want to see how Team Fly reacts. Normally, when you see that happen, you need to focus Liming very, very quickly and punish her for that pick. That's definitely a pick that you can exploit heavily. We'll see if it ever comes to that, or if she goes into Illusionist. 20 stacks now for Vala, 69 for Nazebo. The damage output over here is at 29,000 still for Deathwing. Our majestic dragon is again in the house at the top. Eight kills to five. Every China versus Korea can never complain about too few kills. It's always a party. 
always a party. So, here we go. All the way up at the top. They're trying to isolate them again. Devlin moving straight to the back line. Nice trap against Lucio, but he's able to get out. What about Diablo, though? They want him, and they're so close to getting him, but they can't. Li Ming, yeah, she drops his, his integrate, has to move away here. But it's just insane that Diablo has survived this. Walks out, gets chased by four, and makes it happen. Big push still at the bottom of the map. That is structural value that they're getting here. And as you can tell, Team Fly is having trouble breaking through any meaningful structures. Dropping a wall at this point in time is just not going to cut it. You need to do more than that. And it's just not happening here. There are 13 talents are available now. That gives us, in this case, the ice block. We got Jojo with the Holy Fury and the Siphoning Arrow for Vala. Vala with the extra sustain now on 13, just as we have C8 hit their own uh, talent level. Only one camp on the map, and that's getting claimed by the Chinese team quickly. And at the top, can they go for Blaze? No. He sniffs it out, Repent moves away, and thankfully, Li Ming picked Illusionist. <laughs> I'm happy about that. I was scared for a second after I saw this integrate, but no, 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 no. Doesn't want to die. Just as like, no, guys, I'm not that crazy. I might go for this integrate here and try to go for the long-range poke against the immortal and occasionally against some heroes, but I'm not that insane. The halftime show, again, won by the red team. Can they lock in the immortal? That's the question. They are doing tons of damage with their cap at the top, so Blaze isn't even here. That's a great position for Team Fly. Can they finally get the immortal? I think the answer is yes. That's the second one in the row they're locking in. And this one has big shields. Big shields for the big damage. 16,000 hit points still left as it falls. Jet Propulsion propels uh, our boy farther forward and Blaze gets the connect, but it's not enough to, uh, yeah, to focus the target down. So right now, we have eight kills to five. We have a level lead already for Team Fly, and they can extend that. They can now push in, extend that lead a little bit, and start to work that bot lane. They also need to take some forts down because, again, Red team already lost the fort. They already lost main structures. They have to bring this back a bit and establish some control over the map again. And up to this point, he's doing fairly, fairly well. So he's jumping in against the fort. They're taking this one. This one is an easy drop. And given the fact that we still have more than 50% of the HP remaining on the Immortal, he might just be able to go through the gate as well and open that wall up a little bit. And that's half the battle. More and more damage, obviously, for Vala. 25 stacks for her. It's not as crazy as it could have been in the early game. Oh, that bullet! And the kill of Li Ming! Yeah, he did not respect Greymane. No, definitely not. Death thing just stood there, the bullet hits and it hit hard. And then Li Ming says, well, I got it from here. You take a break, buddy. The bullet was awesome. I'll do the rest. And she has the range on it and just simply destroys him. So, we have 41,000 damage, a top damage dealer in the game. It's still a Deathwing. Vala and Nazebo are so close, though. So, we have three heroes that all did more damage than the top damage dealer on the side of CA. But they still have only taken down a single fort. But they're getting a little bit better here. I mean, again, they're getting slightly ahead now. Are they pushing in for the cap top? They should. Deathwing is already signaling, hey, boys, I'm here. Let's go. Zero deaths on living. Dibbles and he's dead. Diablo dead again. Ah, that's just bad news. With them losing the front liner over and over and over again, they just don't have anybody to sustain them and to provide some cover for the range damage dealers. They just create that space. So what happens instead is that we have a talent advantage for Team Fly. They take the fountain down. They're trying to make a play for the opponent's siege shelling camp, which obviously adds insult to injury. Not only do you not have it pushing for yourself, you gotta invest some time to make sure that it doesn't destroy any of your structures. Mm. Now, at least for the fight, we have 16 versus 16. Mirror Ball is now in. Objective is spawning in three. And with Vala, they should just chunk this one. Yeah. I mean, just look at the damage just dropping. Oh, sorry, the hit points. Dropping is crazy. When Vala gets her rotation up with the arrow and the repeating arrow, she is just crushing this. 30 stacks for her now. 
nearly a halftime show. Yeah, but Greyman is bringing it back, so they need to make that engage work, and they need to make it work quickly. And you get a ball in a good spot for this. And as it turns out, it is actually the blue team that gets the slight lead at the halftime. So now C8, they are coming out swinging. They're trying to bring this back. The last few fights haven't really gone in their favor, but they are very determined to change that right here and now. But they are on the run as well, since they lost a lot of hit points at that front line. Oh, there's the bullet again. Yeah, and lockdown. This time he makes it out. This time he's not falling for it. Li Ming right away with a laser shot. But as Li Ming goes, brrr, Deathwing dies. So yeah, Deathwing is dead. She dropped him after all. And brrr, there's the kill. Yeah, this is starting to get a bit nasty. Now, thankfully for Team uh, Fly, they got the objective. So good for them. They were able to lock in the Punisher. This could have been so much worse. Oh, sorry, the Immortal. It could have been so much worse if not only the two heroes died, but also the, uh, the Immortal gets taken by C8. So instead, what we have now, we have the Immortal just being obliterated topside. Nothing is going to happen. There are four heroes that deal with this. There's nothing else on the map now for Team Fly to take. They have to wait. Deathwing back. Jojo in 7 seconds. And 116 stacks for Nazebo. I'm honestly a little bit curious. The gap is so wide now between where Nazebo is and where he wants to be. He only has 2 levels to soak those 50. So he could decide that he's just trying to play a little bit slower in the game. And then go for his Violent Infection. Unless, of course, he feels that once the opponent has Storm Talents, he also needs to draw even, or they're going to have too much problems in their upcoming team fights. Because if that's the case, I could totally see them go for the Gary upgrade again. Yeah. Very, very likely going to happen again. He's a little bit too far off. Unless he's able to get some additional waves now. He did it on all direct pass, so it stands to reason that he's going to do here too. Unless they really feel that they're going to slow this down. I guess it depends a bit on what's happening around the next objective. But Vile Infection is obviously just fantastic. He's 42 stacks off though, that's a lot. Especially since they're already on level 19. But yeah, so we got all the way top side. The quest completed for Diablo. Again. Now we have him in a much better tank position. It's a trap. It's a trap! But yeah, they're not swinging it. Nobody is falling for that, so. It's 2021, baby! That's what's happening here. 8 kills, 2, 9. 17 kills in the game. 17 minutes. Deathwing, he's poking from the skies. And everybody else is rotating towards the immortal positions. <laughs> yeah. This is a spicy one. It's a 1-1. This is game number 3. And honestly, I don't really know at this point who's going to take it. It could be C8. They're behind in structures, granted, but not by much. And they have been playing a hell of a game, a hell of a series. Stun into Immortal, stun attempted, but didn't quite work out. Rain of Vengeance was not enough here. They're still poking from afar, especially the blue team, of course, wants to make that play. But here's the attack against Diablo, and he's dead again. The bunker too late, Diablo down, and now they go for Blaze. But Deathwing turns to Deathwing and gets murdered. They're trying Greyman, they're trying for Lucio, and that didn't work either. Right now we have 10 kills to 9. Frontliner is back, of course, because he had the stacks. So it's a 5 versus 4. Deathwing isn't here. Diablo got killed 5 times in this game, by the way. 5 times. And now the Immortal needs to be defended somehow, but you're a man down. You're a man down, and there's the second kill. And all of a sudden, CA turns it again. They're coming in with a double kill on Vala and Jojo. And now it's time for them to lock in their Storm Talents. Unbe-fucking-leavable. Once again, they're starting to turn it. They did it against Team Tsunami and against Team Fly. It looks like they might be able to do the same thing. It's just nuts. Nezebo at 152. They have level 20. He's only 23 short of getting the Vile Infection. Vala, after the Seething Hatred, went into the Far Flight Quiver and Nezebo doesn't pick. He's not picking. 
He's not picking. He's dropping the spiders. Deathwing helps him out. They make sure that he doesn't get ganked and he's 158. He's gonna wait it out if he can. The cooldown reduction on the Falling Sword, on the other hand, is of course gonna have a there massive impact no now. They're already abandoning the top four. They know this doesn't stand a chance. Instead, they're trying to get Nazebo down to the bottom wave to take this down. If they have vision at the top, he's gonna move out. And they have vision, so he's moving out. He's trying to get the stacks together as quickly as he can here. Does what he can. 160. He needs to help them eventually, but they're already attempting to burn it down. Falling Sword is in. We got the student fire and the serenity, but yeah, they might even have to sacrifice the keep. And he goes for it. Vile Infection. Vile Infection. He is 13 short. It's not going to be here for the fight, but they're going to try their best to ensure that they're not losing too much. If they can save the core, there's still hope for them, but they need to save the core. And at the pace that they're burning the immortal down, they're going to make that happen. What a game again. Yeah, this is, this is again spicy. Nazebo stacking once more. Stack, 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 and he's so close now. They're gonna get it for the next fight. Especially with this wave pushing in at the bottom of the map thanks to the camp. Yeah. The next wave is coming in and he has it. They just need to stay alive at the top. They need to stay alive here, but keep in mind, the keep is gone anyways. There's nothing to defend. Unless they push into the core, there is nothing to defend here. Nothing that you really have to go for. Nazebo's sitting at 65,000. 65,000 for him as he's about to complete his quest talent. And there it is. Vile Infection is completed. Alright. Now it's going to hit. And it's going to hit hard. Alright. So, by now, it's going to be dangerous. Keep the damage in mind that I talked about. 65,000 for Nazebo. 68,000 for Vala. That's where we're at. <laughs> Late game. Yes. Yeah, they, don't have, they have that thing. He could defend. Nazebo also has the wave clear that he can, of course, utilize at the top lane whenever this pushes in. There's gonna be catapults. But it's 20 versus 20. God! Absolutely love this. Okay! Next immortal. This is the big one. 70,000 against 65,000. Top damage in the game, Vala. For now. Let's see what Nazebo can do. This is the big power spike that you want to have for the Witch Doctor. But you still have to keep him safe in the team fight and ensure that he gets this, uh, those hits in. If you can do that, then he's a monster. And we'll see if they can pull it off. There's already the attempt to flank a little bit. Just moving around, also guarding the position, of course, slightly. And now it's time to party. This is the moment. Who takes the lead in this series? It's a best of five. Game number three. Who takes the lead and will get a match point here? Uh, in Diablo with a Hellgate move as the stun is about to hit him. Goes in for the Hellgate. The Immortal already down to 50% HP. And the halftime show has been taken. C8 with the pressure. They have the pressure and they have the top lane with catapults. Where's that fight? They're trying to force the fights right now. Nice zombie wall. Great zombie wall. And there's the damage. Again, screaming. Has to tap the fountain. But Malfurion in the back. And Malfurion is dead. Too deep. Not enough. The kill against Lucio on the other hand. Oh my god. It just explodes. Everything explodes. They go for it. Jumping out with more hits. Vala is dead. And so is Jojo. What are they doing? They need Nazebo to go for the Pura'ai. Or they are going to lose this game. The core is about to get attacked too if they don't deal with the catapults here. That is a disaster. Big shields now. They had such a good initial position. And look at Nazebo's damage. Guys, he jumped up 17,000 damage in that fight. 17,000 damage. If they save Jojo, if they just save them, if Malfurion doesn't get blindsided like this, and they can just sustain themselves a bit longer, this would be a completely different battle. You just gotta give the Witch Doctor some time. But the blue team doesn't. They flanked, they got the support, they got the healer, and now they are on their way to a potential victory. That immortal is chunking. And it's up to the Witch Doctor to deal with it. There they are, spiders everywhere. But the keep is falling, that's a given. The only question that has to be answered here is, can you save your core? 
The damage against Blaze, Deathwing into Deathwing. Is it happening again? No. But the core gets the Zack. Nazebo, Greymane is dead. Greymane is dead. Nazebo took him down. Nazebo killed Greymane. They go for the core. They're YOLOing. If they YOLO too hard, they might lose the game here. Oh, 50%, 40%. Diablo down. Luncio down. 6%. And this is game. They take the victory. C8 is ahead against Team Fly. Tomb of the Spider Queen, game number four. Well, it could be the last one. Seems like C8 is very, very eager to repeat what they already did in the winner bracket semi-final when they faced off against Team Tsunami. So back then they lost the first map, then they won three in a row and dropped the Korean team into the loser's bracket. And currently they're trying to do the exact same thing. It's pretty cool. Team Fly is in a bit of trouble. Game number one looked pretty pretty strong, pretty dominant. They did exactly what they were supposed to here. And then <laughs> the second game happened and then the third. So now we're heading into our fourth game, which could be the last, depending on the result. Tomb of the Spider Queen is the map. The Witch Doctor gets banned immediately. I mean, right away. This time they're not hesitating on that ban even a bit. Now, we have a bit of a battle for Diablo and Jojo going on, I suppose, on this map. Jojo is something that the Koreans, uh, the Chinese in particular, love to play. The Koreans are also starting up on this. And Diablo can be played by both Capybara and also by Misaka. And both of them have already shown in previous games or in even this series that their Diablo can be pretty sweet. Now, we'll see what they can pull off here. On Battlefield of Eternity then, on the other hand, I gotta say that Diablo got a little bit farmed. I mean, towards the end he had some really sick plays. He got nearly locked down twice and was able to escape with the Hellgate, so that was nice for him. But they definitely started to murder him heavily, and Vala with the single target damage and the Zebu with those spiders made it really difficult, so they played a lot around his stacked baseline talent. But we get Vala instead first. They still have, of course, picks, so they leave the tank choice up to C8. And pretty much tell them, listen, we don't care which one you get here. We'll pick on the next one and then we'll see. But we want a Vala, especially given that Tychus and the Zebra band out. But there's the Mephisto pick again. Okay. So it's pretty much a game of tank chicken that's getting played now. Who picks first? And with Lucio and Mephisto, it's also a very strong start for C8. Especially since their Mephisto kind of wrecked on uh, Volskaya Foundry. Map number two. And Mephisto is something that pops up more and more and more over here. They really, really like it. Yesterday, we've seen so many Mephisto games. And there's Diablo for Misaka. I loved his Diablo plays in the previous series that they had. So I want to see what he can do. And Ana as a support, I mean, not only she herself is awesome, but I really, really want to see what they pull in with her. Is, for example, Li Ming going to be banned now? Is that something where C8 looks at the lineup and says, well, Anana boosted Li Ming, we don't really want that. We don't want Risa to get the resets. Or what are they getting rid of? You could also go for some Malthal players again. We've seen that uh, before. Granted, Infernal Shrines, different map, bit of a different lineup here. But having a Nano boosted Torminant Souls can be pretty powerful. And right up to now, Torminant Souls has been the priority pick on uh, Malthael. I think we had one game where he went into the last rights and yeah, that didn't look good. So they seem to be uh, much more comfortable playing with Torment Souls here. Hogger band, their thing band. Okay, side lane is focused. We have Leo still left on the side lane. Eurel is up. Well, there she is. We got Muradin. Alright, no Johanna this time apparently. No wave clear on her. Instead, no storm bolts and ooh, insta picks. Nano boosted Jaina. And we get the panda. Quick picks by the Korean team. Yeah, they got what they wanted, didn't they? They really, really got what they wanted. Insta picks. They were hoping for those two, and they said, like, yep, that's right down our alley. So let's see what we can do here. This is an interesting one. Ah, I'm hyped. I want game five. Hanzo has the last pick, even more stuns, get the arrow out. And we have two for the Spider Queen. Alright guys, let's go. Are the Koreans surviving another map? Will we have game number five? Is CA dropping another Korean team into the loser's bracket 
and will they move on to the grand final? All those questions will be answered right now on Tomb of the Spider Queen. The 2-1 lead for C8. The Chinese team with Murden played here by Kabibara. So we go straight with Murden Stormbolt potentially into follow-ups from Urel Mephisto. We got Lucio and Hanzo on the blue team side. It's a pretty scary setup. A lot of interrupts also whenever you want to turn in your gems. Hanzo's great for that. Mephisto's pretty good. Lucio can annoy you six days to Sunday. So, yeah, he's going to be nice in that slot too. For Team Fly, on the other hand, they have on the side lane Chen roaming around. Diablo also pretty hit point heavy. The nano boost version of Jaina provided by Ana and then Vala as another damage dealer. So, yeah, there we go. That's our setup on level 1. We already got the Fingers of Frost and the Puncturing Arrow. Honestly, I gotta say, Fingers of Frost is a weird talent to name because it's not really an exclusive talent or an exclusive thing for Jaina. Every guy in here knows that pretty much every woman has Fingers of Frost. I mean, seriously. For some reason, women are always cold. So, yeah. Might be only me, but that, yeah. All women have that. It's universal. It's like in the middle of summer, you're not thinking anything uh, bad, and all of a sudden it's like that chilly thing that comes up your spine, and she's like, ah, oh, I just wanted to be nice, and you know, like, oh. and you're like, what is this? So yeah, all guys know that feeling. And by the way, talking about knowing feelings, holy shit, did they explode here. Two kills for two. That is a big bang. Now, it doesn't change anything really because both here, both teams lost two, but still. And now we go straight in with the missile build this time. I talked about this earlier on uh, Volskaya Foundry. I mean, again, they adjust a little bit to the map that they're playing, obviously. So on Volskaya Foundry, we saw them go with the uh, Lightning Nova over here on, uh, um, on Tomb. We got the Unyielding Power, so it's the missile focus that is most likely going to be comboed off with the level 13 and the level uh, 16 talent later on. Bala went into full arrow again, which is super popular in the Chinese and Korean setup. And yeah, there we go. And it's party time. Yeah, women are always cold. I mean, this happened to pretty much every single guy that is watching this right now. You definitely know what I'm talking about. You're sleeping in bed. You have a girl next to you. Maybe some of the nerds don't know that feeling, but just picture your mom. Doesn't matter. So, again, there's a girl next to you. And you are, like, super warm. And all of a sudden, you're getting really cold throughout the night. And you're wondering, what has happened? And the girl just stole the blanket because she was cold. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, all the guys in here know what I'm talking about. We all had that happen to us. It was an awesome night and all of a sudden you're freezing your ass off because the girl just decided, Hey, I'm cold. That blanket is mine. Give it to me now. So, yeah. Everybody knows that feeling. What is that fight, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> what an insane brawl over here. It's absolutely crazy. Two kills to two. And at first we had like a fight for four heroes down. Now we have a battle that lasts 30 seconds and nobody dies. Everybody is just going full YOLO in this one. We got Team Fly angry as hell. They want to come into the fifth map. They want to make this happen right now. C8 is looking at this and says, guys, this is the first match point. Let's lock the victory in right now. Don't give them a chance to move into the fifth map. Let's make it happen. Bot lane 1v1 is happening. And this is just absolutely nuts. And it's good for the stacks too, of course. We got, well, Mephisto on 32 stacks already. Jaina obviously wants to get her baseline completed, so she gets also the ice block, and she's working on that. And here we go. Another battle in the mid lane. I've seen that before, but this time we might have someone die, and it's Diablo. He's in trouble, gets healed, the pew pew pew, Anna! Don't tell, no way. Yeah, there it is. There's the kill. And Jaina gets out! There it is! Oh, the hits! <laughs> and he goes down! Kill for a kill again! Collect the gems! Collect the gems! There we go. We didn't get all of them though. And by now, the. Yeah, a little bit short, I suppose. Panda also gets attacked. Yeah, this is awesome. We go for Hanzo the Panda! Ah, oh, that's animal abuse! Peter has been informed, reports have been sent, and they can't get the gems. Yeah, that was a little bit of a disaster because now they're really down in the gem count. That's fantastic for the blue team. 
That's fantastic for Z8. And a great spot. They got a first turn in if they are able to turn the gems in. They have a... Oh, that's another one, isn't it? Yes, Jaina is there too. And the quest for Mephisto is completed. Boys, I don't know, but C8 is the Korean Kryptonite. They should rename themselves in the Korean Kryptonite. That's the real team name. They are dropping all of them. They're moving through them like hot butter through cheese. They dropped Team Tsunami and now they are trying to drop Team Fly and it's looking really good. It's looking fantastic. Can they pull it off? Well, we're gonna find out, but Red Team is struggling and the turn-in is about to happen. So yeah, there we go. Another fight. Potentially, they're gonna go straight in for it. Can they? Maybe? Yeah. No, they don't get Shem. Or do they? They really want him and they might get him after all. <laughs> it looks like he could jump out here, but yeah. In this case, I guess they finally save him. It's five kills to three. But look at Mephisto in particular. Every single time in the thick of things. He's sitting at 24,000 damage. Hansa has a little bit more. Padded his stats up to 30k. And this is just getting spicy. That turn is going to hurt because we now have a half level lead for C8 already. And this is not going to be easy. I like that they got the camp here. So this is actually important. This is really important for the defense. So they have the camp. Can time it proper, properly also. What you do here. Web Weavers are coming down. Are going to touch ground right here. But now there's the big opportunity to make a play. And of course gain momentum for the blue team. That's exactly what they're going to try and do here. Take a fort down if they can. Get a few more kills. Deny some gems to them. Yeah, the damage is already there. Anna, by the way, is just pew 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 like crazy. There's the tens. Where's the arrow? Where's the arrow? Keep an eye on Hanzo. They're going to try. They're going to try to connect it. That's the moment where they can make the play. And for Team Fly, this is a nightmare. They're moving back because they know they can't fight without heroic abilities, or at least they shouldn't. But they're exposed, the mid lane gets attacked, and they are losing that fort. It's just the perfect combo for C8. Level 10, any second now. Muradin jumping in, Diablo is there, Lightning Breath straight being used. Where's that Nano boost when you need it? Where's that boost? Mephisto coming in, going for the old the booster Jaina, trying to chase them down, going for Urel, getting the hits connected, but it's just not enough. Five kills to three, the fort is down, but I gotta admit, it could have been worse. It could have been so much worse. Bot lane opened up, but they didn't lose a lot here. And now Team Fly attempting to get a turn in themselves. Avatar for Muradin. Down here we have Chen jumping out. They got 44 gems that they need to turn in. Well, at least 23 of them. And that is a big step into the right direction, but he doesn't even get it. Nope, Mephisto is still again there. It's like, cuckoo, peekaboo. And is just denying it again. They have such an annoying lineup. I said it before, but I'm saying it again. Mephisto and his interrupt potential is just absolutely annoying. And on top of that, you have Hanzo with those arrows. 41 gems turned in. The blue team, by the way, is so close of getting another turn in themselves. Now they have enough gems to make it happen. So, yeah, it's getting nuts. 31 stacks on uh, Vala. That's not too bad. Jaina is about to complete her level one. But guys, the turn ins. No! There it is! No! Not like this! There goes Jaina. The turn in is happening. 20 gems on Misaka's Diablo. And Dibbles. He dies. The arrow hits Vala. I told you. Korean kryptonite. And I mean it. They go in for the next for the next fight here. Yeah, this is just nasty. This is just nasty. They come in and the Korean kryptonite is moving through the mid lane. Down at the bottom of the map, the fort is gonna fall to the Web Weavers here. Level 13 talents are in the top keg place. 40 gems now. 
40 gems on Chen. The panda has it all, but they're losing ground. But they finally, finally, they kill him. They take down Muradin. That might be the first step towards a successful defense, but it is already so much infrastructure that they had to give up here. Look at that keep in the mid lane. It's low. It's at 25%. Down at the bottom of the map, the fort has fallen. This is still pushing. Top side, another fort is getting attacked to Team Fly. They are in such an, a huge amount of pain. And of course, with level 13 talents and this much of a lead, you might even make the way to the play for the boss. They might even go for that. So right now, we got the ults at least up, but they need kills, they need some momentum, they need that level 13. And it's just getting so dangerous here too. If Vala gets sniped, for example, again, then they might just lose even more ground. Now, we have still a couple of gems for Team Fly. So, of course, they lost a lot, but they are currently sitting at 67 and they have turned in 40. So, they suffered through two Web Weaver waves on the other side. But now they might just have a chance to turn in once. Technically, they have two turn-ins. Technically, they have two turn-ins. If they get both, that would be huge. That would be really huge. As long as they don't lose a keep and can take some forts down now, that would be fantastic. But look at Chen. He has 53 gems. They need to make sure he turns in. And yeah, down here, the fight. Chen gets isolated a bit, by the way. They really want him. And of course they do with 53 gems. I mean, are you kidding me? Of course you want the panda. So they're trying to go for it. The strafe is already getting used and Hansa needs to back off. The red web beavers are, are coming down. It was Diablo that turned in. Chen, Chen, Chen still holds a solo turn-in pretty much. That's where we're at right now. If we are heading into the next turn-in phase, Chen has a chance to turn in by himself if he just gets two more gems. That's where we're at. And the problem, of course, for the red team is that all of these lanes are so heavily pushed out that the web beavers are pretty much just spawning at their own base. So that's just nasty. They need kills and ugh, the web beaver is already gone. C8 is playing this incredibly smart. They are moving out, taking Web Weaver down, and then they move back. They don't want to give them that fight, and why would they? They are half a level away from level 16. Time is working in their favor. Those Web Weavers are getting stopped on the lane. So a fight is pretty much the only thing that can bring Team Fly back into the game. So they're trying to play it safe. But there's the potential kill. That's the potential setup. Urel pops the ult. Can they isolate her even further? And the answer seems to be yes. They go for the barbecue and they take her down. It's goat cheese for dinner, baby. The goat is dead. And now the play for the bottom fort. Hanzo's at the top. He took the Web Weavers down. So the first structure falls on the blue team side. They finally are able to get something done here. The fort is down, 16 talents are ready and available for C8, but now the potential second turn in through Chen. And of course, that half level gap to level 16 can be bridged. Diablo gets attacked in the middle, but this is still a five versus four. Still a five versus four, and potentially the play, but Dibbles, Diablo, <laughs> he's alive, and he makes it, wow. Muradin might have gone a bit too deep. Muradin went deep for this one. Don't tell me he gets away. Fat Illidan wants the kill. They can't get him. What? Why did nobody just go in and drop him? They were so close. And now the panda. The panda. <laughs> He's down. All the gems. Anna is dead. And they drop also Vala. They, oh, Vala gets the kill. But they are crushing this team. Absolutely crushing them. Oh my god. Everybody dead with the exception of Diablo. And the gems are lost. Most of the gems are down the drain. They've only been able to rescue 21 of them. 12 kills, 2-6. C8, the Korean kryptonite, is about to do it again. 70,000 damage for Vala and it just doesn't matter. 65,000 for Mephisto. He's going to the bottom of the map, collecting more gems, taking down those waves, pushing them out, and topside boss is now moving in. Now the ones... Oh my god, they have the gems for a turn and I didn't realize... Oh, this is gonna get worse. I mean... 
the blue team has to really pack a punch now. I'm actually a little bit weirded out by the way that they are playing this because they could have moved at any point into the middle and dropped this keep. So they could have done that. Instead, they went for the boss. The boss that, by the way, didn't do anything. And now they can turn in, but at the same time, they could have just gone keep and do the same thing that they did now. So I feel like they did not really get the maximum out of that situation. They're still heavily ahead and they're obviously in the driver's seat. But this could have been better for them. They could have done already more damage considering that it was a that only Diablo was still alive. But either way, that arrow! And there's the follow-up. That's a killer against Vala potentially, and indeed they get it. It's Mephisto that secures it. Vala is down, and now they're coming in for the keep. They're finally gonna take it, and they want way more than that. If they get kills here, then this is game. Jaina is dead, the damage dealers are all gone, Anna is on the run, Murden shows no mercy, no mercy fucking ever, and that's the kill on Diablo 2, the only one that survives is the panda, locked down, he's trying to get away, but he's not gonna make it either, is he now? Nope, he's gonna die too, that's a five-man team wipe, as C8, the Korean kryptonite, moves through Team Fly like hot butter through cheese. The five-man vibe, and they move on to the grand final and drop Team Fly into the loser's bracket. Unbefucking leaveable. What a performance by the Chinese team. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.